in psychiatric research, we have biobanks, brain banks, MRI imaging bank. Surprisingly, we don't have a speech bank. So if you want to access speech samples from patients across the world, there is no one place you can go to. Hi, Dr. Palania Penn. So you've just published a commentary in Schizophrenia Bulletin entitled, Is Collaborative Open Science Possible with Speech Data in Psychiatric Disorders? Do you think you could tell us a little bit about why you felt the need to write this commentary and why now? Hey, thank you, uh, Sylvain. This is an invited commentary. Um, you know, speech is the medium by which we do almost everything in psychiatry. We diagnose disorders based on what people say and how they say it. And we also provide treatment like psychotherapy, for example, which is entirely built on the medium of speech and talking. But, uh, you know, in, in psychiatric research, we have biobanks, brain banks, MRI imaging bank. Surprisingly, we don't have a speech bank. So if you want to access speech samples from patients across the world, there is no one place you can go to. For the last two years, um, around 150 researchers across the world uh, have come together to form a consortia called Discourse and Psychosis, and I, I founded that I, I lead the consortia. And as a part of this consortia, we are taking an effort to build this kind of speech bank. Um, and this invited commentary uh, is a summary of experiences, opportunities, and challenges that we, we face in building a bank like this. So I noticed in your article you outlined six significant obstacles to um, applying open science to this type of data. So given the challenges that are inherent to this type of research, you know, why do you still feel that it's so important to involve open science practices yeah. in your workflow? Yeah. You're right, the, uh, the obstacles are not small, they're enormous, uh, but is it worth overcoming them to build a bank? Number one, um, I, I do completely believe it is worth overcoming these barriers because science has to be open uh, especially clinical research has to be open because one of the huge problems we face in uh, uh, in progress, uh, making progress in psychiatric research is this lack of replicability. What one person does, the other person cannot. Uh, and number two is uh, the lack of access to uh, resources like, uh, you know, rich sets of data is another problem. So it has to be open so a lot of people can come together. A good example is COVID. Once the genome was you know, publicized, it was easy for people to uh, around the world to work together. So teams are formed automatically when you have the data uh, sitting, sitting there openly. So I think the, the goal uh, is something that we really should aspire for. Uh, is it worth overcoming the obstacles? Definitely so. These obstacles are not insurmountable. A lot of these obstacles are there uh, simply because we haven't been doing science in this way for a long time. So uh, for us, historically, these obstacles have been set up because of our own ways of doing things. Overcoming them uh, is completely doable. And so do you currently have uh, research goals or research projects that are going to be applying open science to speech therapy, do you, or to speech um, data? Do you already have something in the works or is this more like an aspirational goal? Is this long term? Excellent. So, you know, we have a lot of projects, but one thing I want to really highlight uh, locally here at uh, Douglas, we've been supported, we're fortunate to have the support of uh, Tannenbaum Open Science Institute, the TOSI, uh, which is operating from the Neuro. So we have support from TOSI to really uh, speed up the efforts of open science and speech area. We have support to provide uh, translational, uh, you know, uh, help to uh, groups around the world. So the speech bank is going to be multilingual. Many languages will be there and many different clinical groups will be contributing to this. It's very important to have a harmonized protocol and TOSI is helping us to build that harmonized protocol. We already have it translated in eight languages and we have started collected data, collecting data and we're collecting it in Douglas, in uh, London, Ontario, in Canada, several sites in the US and the UK as well. And across Europe, there are six more sites contributing to this and seven sites in India are also collecting data right now.